Recently, Brookfield Zoo gave some of our rhino horn to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Department. They use that so that they can train their dogs to track illegal rhino horn imports at the airports. We're here today at a warehouse out of Chicago O'Hare Airport. Uh, we're going to examine imports and exports for wildlife products that might be smuggled and we're going to use the dog to do it. All rhinos are in peril, but the type we have here at Brookfield Zoo, the black rhino, are especially in danger. They're critically endangered with numbers ranging only around 5,000 left in the wild. Rhino populations are being decimated by poaching and other crises, habitat encroachment, habitat loss, but poaching is the biggest thing. And black rhinos in particular are being poached very heavily throughout their range in Africa. They're being poached to use the horn for traditional Chinese medicine, also to make dagger handles, and more recently, it's actually become a status symbol for the recently wealthy. We're hoping to do our part to you know, find those things being uh, imported and exported, and to hopefully prosecute the people who are involved in that smuggling ring. So the benefit of confiscating rhino horn at our airports and our borders is that we're able to disrupt the supply chain and then also we're able to prosecute the offenders. That's why having the dogs is so important. They can use the rhino horn we provided them to train their dogs to be able to sniff out and detect this illegal activity. Our dogs are trained with positive reinforcement. Uh, they actually are started off with some clicker training to associate the clicker with the treats with the action that we want them to do and then we wean them off of the clicker but they still receive treats and that's part of why we need to do the continuous training is to keep the dogs motivated. They know that they're getting the treats that makes them want to work although for them it's a game. When the dogs find something in a warehouse their alert is to sit. So he'll sniff a box then he'll sit and then the procedure would be since we do have examination authority for imports and exports we can then open the box and see what's inside and then, you know, depending on what we find, then we have to contact the broker. So we need to see if everything gets imported or exported properly with the proper permits. Um, things like elephant ivory and rhino horn. Rhino horn especially, you know, it's probably not going to be legal, so we'll probably be contacting one of our agents right away to pursue that further. Confiscated materials are often used for training or outreach. We do try to educate the public. Sometimes we'll donate to educational places like museums and then anything else can go to our repository uh, and sometimes items are destroyed. Some of the training items are things that we've seized over the course of the law enforcement actions, but uh, we did not have enough rhino horn and so it was really wonderful to be able to work in collaboration with the Brookfield Zoo and some others who've donated to us um, so that, that we do have enough of for everyone to train with the proper quantities. Rhino horn is made out of keratin. A lot of things are made out of keratin. Your own fingernails, the hooves of animals, the horns of rhinos. So when we need a piece of rhino horn to give to US Fish and Wildlife, all we simply do is trim a small piece of this horn off and it's no different than trimming your own fingernails. In addition to trimming their horns for US Fish and Wildlife, sometimes we trim their horns for other reasons, just for their own health. Sometimes they'll get too long and pointy and maybe they'll start splintering or something. So we'll trim them back a little. Brookfield Zoo is dedicated to the conservation of animals across the globe and working with U.S. Fish and Wildlife on this project helps to fulfill that mission.